I was having a conversation with Emily the other day and I kind of concluded I feel like I'm in the best shape I've ever been. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, but I guess it did make me think about what's got me to this point now. Throughout this video, I'll check up some transformation type pictures up on the screen so you can kind of see my journey. It's easy to look from the outside in on someone else's success, lifestyle or appearance and cherry pick the things that got them there or that we think that got them there. Maybe it saves our self-esteem if we think they've had an advantage or some sort of miracles happen or they've been lucky. It's really nice for me to sit on the sofa and see any professional athlete on the TV and think they must have got pretty lucky with genetics or just being in the right place at the right time and getting scouted. It means I can look past all of the hard work that they've put in to get there and the sacrifices that they might have made. It saves me from thinking they might be willing to do something that I'm just not. Or if I see someone driving around in a Ferrari, I think they must have been born into wealth or potentially they're just renting it. There's many instances of this. The point is, it's easy to overlook how somebody gets the desirable outcome. Maybe it's wealth, maybe it's physical shape, maybe it's their fitness. And I'm not saying there isn't any luck involved, there certainly is, and sometimes there can be a lot of it. And genetics do play a massive role as well. But there's a lot that's possible and there's a lot that's in our control. Now, everybody's idea of what being in good shape means is totally different. And I think everyone has their own individual hang-ups, no matter what they look like or how other people view them. But here's some universal things that have helped me get to the point where I feel like I'm in good shape. It doesn't mean you think I'm in good shape or it doesn't mean lots of people think I'm in good shape. It's more of just a personal feeling where I feel confident within my own skin and I feel like I'm in good shape. And that's what matters really. It's for me, it's not really for anybody else, but there's things that have helped me get to this point where I can feel that within myself. So here's what I've learned along the way, being in the fitness industry so far, and this is from others around me. Nothing is new here, it's mostly things I've applied from other people that are much smarter than me. What I've realized is fitness and physical changes don't come overnight. <gasps> I know that's not rocket science, you've probably heard it before, you probably don't like hearing it, I don't either, but it's something that you really have to buy into. You have to be okay with putting in some work and seeing no results until later on down the line. What really shapes us is the systems, the habits and the lifestyles we create, which compound over time and make us what we are. It's not really any one thing that gets somebody into great shape, it's a number of different things and there's not something that works for everybody. So here's some examples of things that I would attribute my fitness levels to that aren't just merely sharing a 10 minute ab workout with you. There's loads of great things on this list, but the first thing that really made a big difference for me was adopting more of the growth type mindset and coming to the realization that there was a lot that was possible and a lot that was in my control. If there was something particular that I was bad at or just not very good at, rather than accepting it, I know now if I work at that thing, learn about it, practice it, then I can get better at it. And I also know that there's some trial and error and there's a lot of failing along the way when you're first trying to learn something or get better at something that you find difficult. And that's okay, that's part of the course, that's normal and that's helpful to help you get better at something. That might sound obvious and stupid to some, but I definitely used to be of the mindset that if I had certain genetics or traits or certain things that I wasn't very good at, maybe I just couldn't do much about it. So if I wasn't instantly good at something, I would just ignore it and then obviously I would never get better at that thing. But now I have that understanding, if I can't do something inside or outside the gym, I'm willing to practice and learn to achieve it rather than instantly give up, even if it means going through that failure. And I'll touch on more of the gym stuff in a minute. One of the second things I learn is around lifestyle, identity, habits, and systems. That all sounds like a lot and a lot of it comes from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, and there's a few other books around this. I would def definitely recommend those. But what I'm getting at, the main point is, it's things that we do on a daily basis. So some people watch five hours of TV most days, others do park run every single Saturday, some might have the same lunch every day, or walk to work. There's many little things that contribute to how you look and feel, and there's many different ways to achieve a certain goal. Everything can work, but to work and work long-term, and truly shape you, it has to become a habit, a routine, or a system. Otherwise, if it's done for a week, a month, or even a year, the subsequent time after that, you'll return to what you were doing beforehand. 
So it's about making your normal effective, efficient enough to shape you how you want to be in a sustainable way. So systems, habits, and lifestyle factors that have worked for me that I do 80% of the time all year round for the past few years. I'll simply list them because not one of them is really more important than the other. And what I'd also stress here is that they weren't all added or adopted or became habits at once. It was over years, to be honest. Most of these are about forming new habits that are beneficial and help me get to the shape that I want to be in and the fitness that I want. But number one is actually about kind of eliminating a habit. Now, I stopped gaming and reduced my screen time massively when I was in my teens. I used to be a massive gamer and there's no problem with that. I had so much fun and I still enjoy a little bit now if I get the chance. But I got to the point where it was taking up too much of my time and it wasn't really great for looking or feeling good. Now, this didn't instantly mean I was being more active or super fit overnight. But over the years, it has freed up some time for me where I was being quite sedentary. And now I've filled that with more active and more beneficial things for my goals. Number two, this is a simple nutrition thing. And that's having the same breakfast and lunch most of the time, Monday to Friday, and sometimes at the weekend as well. So it's 80% of the time I'm having at least the same breakfast and most of the time the same lunch as well. Now, this might be boring, but I've learned to view food as more of a fuel source. And there's things that I can do that fill me up, can be cheap, convenient, easy to prepare, and help me maintain a good weight. Having the same thing all the time means it's easy for me to be super consistent. I don't need to make a decision when it comes to meals because it's already done ahead of time and the food's already there, so I can't really make a bad decision. And the foods that I've picked for these two meals just align with my goals and they fill me up, so it doesn't leave much room for me to go wrong or go off the rails, so to speak. So variety is great when it comes to food, but don't be afraid of being boring, doing what's convenient, and doing what aligns with your goals as well. Now, let's go into number three, and that's strength training, at least three times per week. Strength training has shaped me massively. It's helped me put on muscle and made me feel stronger and more confident. And I also know as we age, muscle mass strength and bone strength is super key for health. So when I started out, I didn't know what I was doing at all when it came to training, but I knew one thing, and that was that it was good for me in numerous ways. I didn't see instant results overnight, but I knew it was a good thing and it felt like a good thing doing it. So I learned about it, I researched it, and I practiced it. I didn't start out by lifting loads of weights. I started on the lightest weights possible, doing machines, and at the time, I was probably doing everything wrong. But I was still doing something, and I was trying to get better at it. And over time, I've progressed and made it into a solid habit. I have breaks sometimes every now and then, and life does get in the way but I do want it to be part of my life forever. It's super important to me. So I make sure generally it's kept in my routine. And something I would stress here is something is always better than nothing. Even if you're not exercising perfectly, you don't have the right form or the routine is not perfect, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's still better that you're doing something and that gets you on the ladder to progressing in the right direction. Number four, I love this one. This is setting goals, taking on fitness challenges, and doing things I'm not sure are possible, or I just know I'm really not very good at. By doing something I'm not good at, or that I traditionally don't think that I'm good at, by doing that thing and overcoming it, it's just a massive sense of achievement, and it helps build confidence massively. It also means that I'm taking on a challenge, learning something new, and progressing my skills for the better. It doesn't necessarily have to be fitness related, but by having these kind of fitness challenges, it means I'm gaining physically, I'll have more motivation to train for something in particular, and when I do the challenge, obviously I'll gain something out of it as well, but also mentally. So I know it's cliche and people speak about it a lot, but I definitely would encourage anybody just to do things that you're slightly uncomfortable with, challenge yourself, whether it's fitness, whether it's in work, whether it's anything really. And challenges are obviously different for everybody. It's not climbing up Mount Everest for everyone. It might just be stepping outside the front door every single day or the first time in a long time or turning up to an exercise class or going out for a 10 minute walk. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's challenging you beyond what you're already doing at the minute, 
then it's helping you progress in a good direction. Number five, and that's practicing discipline. I think discipline sometimes gets a bad rap. It's got some kind of negative connotations around it, but practicing discipline has definitely helped me. For the times when I'm not motivated, I really don't want to do something. And practicing discipline for me is just trying to do things in the moment that I really don't want to do. Uh, a great example of this is trying to wake up early or setting my alarm early and making sure I get up to that. It doesn't work every time and in the past it hasn't worked at all, but now I can get up super easy in the mornings because I've practiced discipline and it becomes a bit of a routine and a bit more habitual. Setting that alarm early and getting up to it doesn't give you any superpowers or anything, but more than likely when that alarm goes off nice and early, you don't wanna get up and doing so and pushing through that helps work your discipline muscle. And that just carries over to other things in life. You become more disciplined with your training, more disciplined with your food. Another small example that I just thought about today, which is a really weird one, is tying up my shoelaces and untying my shoelaces. Now, I never used to do that as a kid. It's something that I really just, you know, I couldn't be bothered to do, too lazy, um, but it did kind of ruin my shoes. And then recently, it's something I've made sure that I'm doing. I don't know why, but it just helps me practice discipline. I know it's a really small thing, but it's something that I don't wanna do. And by practicing that discipline, it helps carry over into other things. I just become more disciplined generally with my calendar, with nutrition and training, like I've said. So you can start off practicing discipline with small things, and I think it really carries over into what you look like and how you feel about yourself. Now I've got one more thing for you, something that I still kind of struggle with today, and that is trying to get rid of the all or nothing mindset. It's easy to go all in on training when you're super motivated and you want to do da 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 and absolutely smash your nutrition and be really strict on yourself. But by doing so, sometimes that means that when we go off the rails slightly, we just completely give up and quit on things and go completely back the other way and sometimes much worse. So rather than doing that, I just try and be super realistic with all of the goals that I set with my training, with my nutrition and think much more long term. I question myself if I'm making any changes thinking, can I sustain this a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? If the answer is yes, then it's probably a good change. If I think I can only do it for a week or a couple of weeks being really realistic with myself, then it's probably not worth doing. And on the flip side, when I'm really not feeling motivated at all and not feeling good, I'll just try and do the bare minimum. I'll make sure that I get something done because that's always better than nothing. And if I can capitalize when I've got motivation for a few weeks, but then also when I'm demotivated, just keep things nice and steady, then over time, over the years, that means I'm still progressing in the right direction. Now, let me know in the comments below if any of those resonated with you, any of those that you do already, any of those that you think are useful or maybe you haven't thought about, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to talk about these things. It's different from merely just sharing a workout with you or do X, Y, and Z that might not necessarily fit with your lifestyle. Lots of things work, but to make them work, we have to do them and they have to fit in with us and our lifestyle. So that's today's video. If you liked it as well, then please give it a like. It really does help me out. And if you're interested in more videos like this or you wanna see my training journey, then hit subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. And until my next video, have a really good one and I'll see you then.